Hello everybody, welcome back. I've been working on a new project. It's going to be a video on SDR, Software Defined Radio. And I've been trying to learn how to use some new software and a new product that includes the short wave bands. While listening to the radio the other day, I came across something that I was not prepared to hear. Stick around, you're not going to believe what I found on 40 meters. This is John Hudson, G4ABQ. He's co-founder of SDR Play. And recently, he sent me a product that his group has been developing over in England. It's a little black box. Reminds me of the Roku box that's hanging on the back of my TV. About the same size. It's got a place here to plug in the USB that goes to the computer. And on this side, we're connecting to an antenna that I have outside. John calls this the RSP, that stands for Radio Spectrum Processor. Their website at sdrplay.com showed me everything I needed to know to get this thing up and running. A piece of software called HDSDR, which provides the graphic interface and controls for this software-defined receiver. The RSP uses a tiny SMA connector to hook up the antenna. I didn't have anything that small, so I used a jumper wire and a couple of alligator clips to just jerry-rig an antenna together. I wanted to try this out. Something to do while I wait for Uncle Amazon to mail me an adapter. I've experimented with other RTL type SDR dongles like this one here and this little one right here. But they don't even begin to cover the radio spectrum that's covered by this SDR play device. The RSP will handle anything from as low as 100 kilohertz clear up to 2 gigahertz. Wow, that's a lot of listening! These little RTL dongles only cover the higher portions of that spectrum. They require another device called an up converter to bring them down into the HF bands. Although it's very interesting to listen to airplanes and police and fire at the higher frequencies, the lower frequencies are a lot of fun. Shortwave listening is a hobby that's been around for over a hundred years, and to do that, we need to get down to those lower frequencies. Computer, I have a live SWR meter, so you can visually see exactly what your signal is, and then I'm going to switch over to another ham. He's running the same same thing. Uh, in fact, he's running the same mic and the same antenna, uh, different radio, and uh, he also has a meter on his QRZ page, so you can actually see your signal. So with that, let me shoot you over to him, Tom. That's single sideband. Now listen to some CW. That's what hams call Morse code. In addition to Morse code, hams have various ways of sending digital data and text data over amateur radio. Listen to this one. As you tune around the HF bands, you'll run across some unusual sounds. Typically, these are some form of digital communications. They may be slow-scan TV or even fast-scan TV. And then, as I said, I came across one a couple nights ago that was most unusual. We'll come to that in a minute. Probably the most fun you'll have with shortwave listening is finding stations that are really far away. Hams call that DX. This next station that you're going to hear is ZL2AN. He's over 7,000 miles away in New Zealand, and I was able to copy him with a software-defined radio and an outdoor wire antenna. Here's the other one, it's about where it should go. So I'll, um, I'll go to the short path and, and start calling in. You can look at it as you turn your antenna around. So I'll push the button and um, it will go there now. ZS3Y, ZL2AN. And then, while listening to some CW, I noticed this very unusual pattern in the waterfall. You see it here? I was not prepared at all for what I heard when I selected this. <laughs> Listen for yourself. You're not going to believe this.
So how can this be that we can actually hear somebody snoring on ham radio? Well, the radio amateurs out there can probably guess how that's happening. But if you're not that familiar with ham radios, let me explain it for you. This is my radio over here. Here's the microphone. When I want to talk on the radio, I push this button. That turns on the transmitter. Having a conversation on amateur radio means that you turn your transmitter on and off. But some hams like to talk a lot, and they don't want to be bothered with pushing a button every time they speak. So there's a special feature built into the amateur radio called Vox for Voice Operated Relay or Voice Operated Transmit. Look here. Most transceivers have a box button, like this one here. When you press the button, it turns box on. So then when you speak, your voice automatically turns on the transmitter. When you stop talking, the transmitter turns off. Well, that's all fine and dandy, until you fall asleep in front of your radio. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. In the future, we'll do a few more experimenting, messing around with this really interesting little box. Fun thing to add to your computer and a great way to enjoy shortwave listening. Visit sdrplay.com for more information about the RSP. Of course, all of us YouTube content providers really appreciate it when you push that little like button right down here. And if you haven't already done it, subscribe.